I'm going to hit record. Yeah. And we are going live in three, two, something's happening. One. I zero. don't, I'm not, not connected. This meeting We're live. Is, we'll, we'll come back. Welcome, um, everybody, here to uh, Siegel Talks at the Martney Siegel Theater Center at the Graduate Center CUNY. It's uh, week 13 for us here at uh, the Siegel Center, as far as we know, the only institution in the Americas and in Europe um, um, producing new uh, work every day of the week uh, to relate it or uh, programming to COVID, Corona, um, the social unrest we are experiencing. And we listen to voices from all around the world, from India and South Africa and uh, from Chile and, uh, and uh, Germany, Italy, all the countries, uh, Hong Kong, Malaysia, we just had on. So um, we are trying really to get uh, an overview of uh, how artists uh, make it in that time. They are hit first. They're going to be working, uh, uh, the, start working the latest again. People say many countries, massage salons and theaters will open at the same time. Um, we are basically non-essential. And what we normally don't have, we don't have space, we don't have money, is now amplified in a catastrophic situation up to the end of the year, most people I know, most theater artists, musicians have no work, no gigs. They can't even work in the restaurants, which often normally they did, even though they might be slightly reopening. And they are. And businesses are starting today. Offices are, are open for business. It's the first day. Uh, Cuomo uh, uh, said it's uh, fine to start with low occupancy again. Numbers are not encouraging. It's up 15%. Uh, infection rate. Uh, of course, there's more testing, but still, it's not good signs. Uh, also, not good news. There's a study done in Europe. They say even if you had corona, antibody uh, 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 particles are decreasing after three to four months. It's 90% disappear. Normally, only 70% you keep the antibodies. But um, there's something going on. Nobody knows yet exactly what it is. And they all wish, of course, that we would be immune. Artists have been always, as we say, on the right side of social change, of justice, and the fight for the complex history of freedoms. And, um, and we need to listen to them. And there's ever a time when art is important. Um, it is now. We just had Saman Amini from Iran, who was living in the Netherlands. He said, if anybody had any doubt why art is important, has anybody gotten through corona without reading a book, listening to music, looking at paintings, having sculptures in their replaced in the home. Now we do know next to everything else what artists uh, do and contribute to society, how significant it is. And also for artists, it's time to speak up. It's time to be part of the conversation, rethink radically what we are doing. And we have to change ourselves um, also to see the world change. This is what we hear from many, many who are here with us. Today, we have two significant artists uh, with us, two uh, artists who represent, I think, also the very best uh, of America and how it should be, the dream of America and the diversity and the inclusion. Uh, Kushnov famously said, uh, New York is the melting pot that never melted. And today we have with us uh, Muriel Miguel and Gloria Miguel from the great Spider Women Theater, Native American Indigenous Theater Company. Since the 70s, uh, Muriel is a choreographer, director, and an actor. She's the founding and artistic director of Spider Woman Theater, the longest running indigenous women's theater company in North America. She has directed almost everything, uh, what they have done since then. She has taught at many centers. I think also worked with Joe Jaikin at the Open Theater. Is that right? That's right. And uh, is an, has an honorary degree from uh, the Florida, I think, University of Fine Arts. Um, Gloria is a Kuna uh, Rapunak elder, grew up in Brooklyn and performing in circus side shows with her family, singing and doing drama in church. And she studied theater in Oberlin. And then she joined uh, with her sister, Muriel, to form Spider Women Theater. Their first production, Women in Violence, was a big success, was significant. They traveled around the world, Europe, the Nancy Festival. And, um, and they have been producing ever since. They have been a couple of times to the Siegel Center and I've always uh, valued them. Their one production was something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. It, it, it had a dialogue between abstract patterns and weavings and many, many, many other things. So um, 
This will be the end of my um, hopefully not too long introduction. Muriel and Gloria, thank you both for uh, spending time with us, taking the time and energy. And maybe Gloria, we start with you who got a minute or two before uh, the Halron show started on her iPad and is doing in Zoom. Gloria, how are you and where are you? <laughs> I am, um, I guess, okay. Uh, for my age, I'm still uh, participating, working and, and screaming and crying. <laughs> I'm in my apartment in the West Village, West Bend. Uh, that's where I am now. New York City. In New York City. West Bess is an artist housing, one of the, there should be so many, many more, but a fantastic That's institution. Where I live. On the That's second floor, right over the door on Bessemer Street. Fantastic. Okay. Fantastic. And Muriel, where are you? Well, I live in a house, the family house, and I'm in Brooklyn. What and neighborhood? And I have a backyard. Oh, God, what is this neighborhood called? I, um, uh, Maybe I don't tell remember. Us, tell us the street. It's, uh, it's DeGraw Street, but it's, uh, it, it keeps on changing what, what neighborhood this is. It used to be Red Hook. It used to be uh, uh, the canal there, and, and, uh, but now it has another name. What's the name, Deborah? Um, oh, the Carol street. Gardens. That's what it's called now. It's yeah, quite she she. So all of a sudden you are in the Shishi neighborhood. That gives us an idea of the history you both carry with you. Um, so Corona, what, what did this time of confinement and lockdown, what did it mean to you guys personally? Is that who, me, Gloria? Yeah. Well, Gloria. I had a hell of a time. Our show ended in January, February. And I had a bad cold and the doctor says, stay home. So uh, third week in February, I stayed home and I've been home ever since. So it's um, a very hard because I discovered and I just, after talking to other native women uh, and, and men, uh, 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 the, the, the Corona mixed in with the Black Lives Matter whole situation and it, for me, and, and for me personally, I, I became very sick. I just uh, I had some sort of attack and so forth. And uh, I, I discovered that it brought up all the things that I filed away in order to continue living. And, and so I, I became quite ill and uh, my daughter helped me. Uh, uh, she lives in Toronto. And her name was Monique Mohika, and uh, and the, I had a counselor, and the counselor discovered that I hid all these horrible things that happened to me as a person of color in New York, and uh, and and the coronavirus started picking them out, getting them out, making me sick, and then the Black Lives Floyd, uh, George Floyd was killed, and it was a double whammy because it brought out like people of color, not only black, or people of color suffered, suffered from the day they were born. And uh, in order to go on living, uh, 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 put aside all the hate, and a lot of the hate, not all of it. And so all this starts coming out, all this starts coming out, okay. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to go through any of the stories if you want any, okay. But it did affect me and I, and I discovered it affected uh, a lot of Native women I know. So that they, they were ill, they were um, upset, they tried to do something if they could. I was sort of handicapped because I'm so old, I had to stay home. So. Uh, it, it was very interesting what came out of that file cabinet that I threw away and how it connected with Black Lives Matter and uh, how uh, there are uh, Indian Native people who are trying to work in this. And it's difficult too because we went through how also and um, 
and it's still going on, and uh, and it's all over the world. Because when I went to Europe, I went through hell also. So uh, personally, you know, I, I was never beaten up, uh, uh, but uh, horrible, nasty, uh, unnecessary things happened all my life, and uh, and it happened to all the native people all their lives also, and. Um, I'm speaking but mainly for myself for what this corona brought up and, and how it uh, clashed with the uh, Black Lives Matter and what to do now because sometimes when I start thinking of it, I get sick all over again. My heart beats, my, I get chills, I, I, you know, I don't know. So this is something that I have to work out on my own, I guess, uh, not file it away but it's there and I'm sure I'm not the only native person that has this. And, um, and uh, 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 I keep on saying because of my age, I am handicapped, but I have to stay in. And it's not easy for me to go out and uh, uh, protest. It's not easy for me to travel, anybody right now. And uh, uh, it's, a, it's something that it, it's good that this uh, talk came up because I, I will talk about it and hope I don't get sick. But it's, it's, it's there uh, in so many ways. How oh, we, I, I would say to myself, I suffered from the day I was born from being native in US, in New York City, in Brooklyn, and how it, it's not only me, you know, we all suffered in our way. And we were all killed, you know, you know, about wounded knee and the police and everything. A lot of people were killed and a lot of people are still fighting and a lot of people have grown and a lot of people have um, just let their fear hold them back. So there's so many stories. There's so many stories that at this point in my life, I don't know where to start. I sit down here and start writing and say, oh no, this is more important. That's more important. I'm going to make a new piece about this. I, where do I, you know, it, but it, it, it's there, there's a lot of work to be done, and I'm not the only one, fortunately or unfortunately. Uh, that, that, and I have a hell of a lot of stories and a lot, a lot of uh, work to do to uh, recover emotionally and physically uh, and historically, and uh, I don't have much time. You know, because I'm I'm a, an elder elder, so uh, I'll stop there for a moment. You can come back to me. Yeah. So you want me to talk? Yeah, please, <laughs> please do. Uh, well, you you know I came I was in Canada when everything happened, and we came across the border. And I would just started to think about what what this meant, this virus meant. And then I started to hear things where I would say to my partner, um, you know, we re really should clean the wheel and, and clean the, you know, the, uh, the uh, car. And uh, then I started to talk about putting gloves on to get the gas out of the tanks. And then about pushing a button that we should have a gloves on. But we still weren't wearing masks. No one asked us to wear masks. People were fighting over toilet paper. And I was like, I, I, didn't, know, I didn't know what it was. And it felt like it was going to leave. And so um, it was going to be like the flu. And um, when we got back, it was two days later that everything was shut down. And I was in the house and I kept on, you know, uh, I heard that one of the ensemble passed away. That was really shocking. Wow. Then I heard of another person that passed away and that was really shocking. And then uh, I heard about another person. So it felt like it was coming closer and closer and closer. And then my son-in-law passed. And that was awful. All of them from COVID? All from COVID. And my daughter 
was in uh, our house and she had the virus and I couldn't touch her. I couldn't go to the hospital. I couldn't touch my granddaughter. I was, I was in the house and my daughter heard that her husband passed. She couldn't do anything about it. And you feel like you're not giving support. You can't go out of your house. And there, you know, it, it was like, it, not only did it get closer and closer, but now we had this huge elephant in the room with us. And that was the, the virus. And so I, um, it was very hard. And the funeral was very hard. I couldn't go to the funeral. I couldn't do anything. And uh, it, it, I think the worst thing is that um, we are like animals. You know, we are animals. And, and we want to touch. We want to hug. We want to do all of this. And it was taken away from us. So the suffering gets bigger and bigger, you know, and worse and worse. And uh, that's how I was thinking. And, and then you, you get all the anxiety. You get all the anxiety of, of what is happening. And um, I think I've been out three or four times now, out into the world. And that, that has been it. So I have ended up, I have a backyard and I have big trees. And I, um, I go there. I... Uh, I pray to the tree, I touch the tree, I put down stuff for my son-in-law. And uh, I've planted, I've planted a lot. And we've planted vegetables and, uh, and, and all of that. We've planted a lot of things. And so I can look out the window and see things growing. And that was really, it took a lot of the anxiety away from me. It was that just putting my hands in the dirt and, and, uh, and watering and, and looking and looking and looking at the flowers and, and the, uh, the tomatoes growing. And, you, you know, it, it, it soothed me in a way that I, uh, sitting at home, didn't work for me. Then I started to use Zoom and, um, and I talked to a number of people from the ensemble. And uh, so we're working now on, on a piece and see if we can work it the same way that uh, we usually work. The future to me is really scary mm -hmm. because, I mean, how are we going to do this? How we, you know, uh, uh, our work is with uh, touch and breath and uh, all those things you can't do. You can't touch. You can't breathe it next to each other. Uh, so how are we going to do the future, you know, and, and, uh, and I think with that has to come, uh, a big talk, a big talk and a big zoom with a lot of, uh, the old native, uh, theater people and, and try to figure this out for us. And, uh, that's, that, that's how I'm feeling that, you know, we have to now start preparing in a different way. Maybe we were too comfortable, all of us, all of us artists. I'm not only talking about Native, but, you know, all of us have been too comfortable. And uh, this is a big, big lesson. I don't know. I have to think about that. You know, I, I have people calling me up that, you know, a friend of mine said, I have COVID-19, you know, and I have to I have to be there like, oh, yeah, well, how are you feeling and so forth. But inside, inside my, my body, I'm going, ah, you know, you know, she is, she could pass. So, I mean, that's, that's how I am thinking, you know. Yep. Is there something else you want to ask us? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm just, um, you know, I'm taking that all in. And, um, yeah. and, um, and, and, um, and, and of course, I think also that social unrest on the street um, and Black Lives Matter, as both of you said, that must have an impact. Yeah. Gloria, what, what, what comes to your mind when you, uh, 
when you when you well first of all yeah i understand that 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 phrase um uh uh white what is it called now is it white um supremacy supremacy and the other word privilege privilege, privilege. right privilege and i'm thinking uh this isn't new it's happened before i know how these people feel i know how it is to uh uh walk down the street and and someone spit on you. I know how it is to walk down anywhere and have someone pull your hair. Okay, that 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 uh, are, are things that, that happened all your life and you store it away because you have to go on living. Uh, I've never been uh, 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 attacked physically, but emotionally, yes, uh, all my life. So I identify i didn't go i you know i've never had a, a gun in my head or my back or anything but i i can identify and it's so wrong and it so it gets me so angry that because of my skin color because of our skin color that because of uh where we were and and, and what happened to our ancestors we are being punished and a white privilege cannot understand maybe the young people are understanding uh because when you when you mention it uh people say oh you're too sensitive oh uh i never had an experience like of course when you walk into a room people don't stop and look at you who are you what are you what are you going to do here you know you, you you don't have that initial bang bang that 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 start with you from the beginning so it's so it's difficult yes there are people who can identify there are people who are allies i guess you can call but they still don't understand and they're just beginning to understand and maybe the young people will be able to understand now, now i know it goes way 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 back uh, um, and that, that's, I think, what gets me ill and sick about, uh, okay, yes, there are one or two allies. There are many allies on the street. And I was very impressed with uh, the group saying, oh, when the police were really on top of, the, of a line of people, black people, someone yelled out, white shield, and the white people, white kids came in front. And the police stop, and that, that that's just such a good uh, example. Uh, uh, it's not only the police; it's it's the school teachers, it's it's, it's the ministers, it's your next door neighbor, it's it's the children you go to school with, or the teachers in school. That that it has to change from way back and understand what it's like to be that different. And in, in your eyes, in your world, and say, you know, uh, uh, every life of color matters. All those children at the border, all the people at the border, all the people uh, uh, of color anywhere, uh, all over the world. Is it because I remember one time thinking, oh, I wonder what it's like in Europe. I went to Europe, it's the same. People make fun of me, ooh, in the street. Oh, we don't mean anything, we love you. Uh, you know, that, that kind of, it's really ingrained in the white personality. And it's a hell of a lot of work that we've got to do. And then I say to myself, I've got to lick my own wounds, take care of my own people, uh, and and then make, make us strong and go out and, and gather, I, I, it's, it's, it's a big job. And, and I think it's a job now that the young people, very young people are beginning to understand. Like when I heard that white shield and the white kids came in front, you know, the, that's the beginning to understand what we're going through and what starts from, from the word go. When my daughter was born in the hospital, I was in the elevator with the baby in my arms 
and the nurses was looking at her and saying, oh, what is she? What is she? What is she? And I looked at them and I said, she's a human being. So I was saying, bastards. But that, it begins with, with, the, with, the, with the, the hate or the misunderstanding or the not understanding of the, the ruling class. And they want to hold us back and they're holding us back and then and we have to fight not to be crazy and neurotic and, and um, full of hate in return. And uh, it's a long story, so many stories, so many stories. But when I start opening that file cabinet of all the things that I threw in there in order to go on living, it made me sick. And I'm still fighting that sickness and I'm not the only one and, and, and many uh, Native women I've, I've talked to are fighting that also. And then uh, the, the men are still fighting that, plus the Black men that I understand so well, uh, uh, and women, uh, 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 fighting for just, uh, uh, just, just to be able to exist, to take a glass of water, to walk into a restaurant, to go uh, sit in the theater. Uh, uh, those are the little things, not the big things. And maybe it will come out. Maybe the next generation will, of white people uh, uh, will understand. But it's there. Well, I think there. about Don't, a lot of times, what I think about is how, um, you know, they talk about Native people have, you know, high, a lot of high blo uh, blood pressure and uh, diabetes and uh, all, all these all these diseases and and what Gloria is saying is that how can you not if you're walking down the street and people attack you how can you not if people say things to you how can you not you know it's not to me surprising that people have high blood pressure and diabetes and things and I think it comes from that it comes from being not able to really say something to people and now is the time to say things and now it's really important and what i feel is that with black lives matter you know i am i am there and i you know i i am there i i i i believe with all these young people old people and, and everything that has happened but at the same time here I am, and I'm waiting for someone to say uh, Native American, and no one is saying it. Well, very few. It's an afterthought. And I, again, I feel that, that feeling of um, what are we? This was, this is our land. And uh, other people talk about that being their land. You know, and I, you know, I bristle because I say to myself, this is really our land. This is where you got off of boats to be here on this land. And uh, so it's so uh, hard sometimes. And, and then I, I realize that a lot of Native people and the way we look at things is different. And it's never taken into consideration that the way we think at times, it comes out maybe the same way with everyone else, but me have a different route. And we, and, and uh, that has to be appreciated that we have a different route. I, I saw uh, in Minneapolis, and there's a lot of native people in Minneapolis and, uh, and where, uh, he uh, was um, killed. Uh, Native people came and made it a sacred place. And then they brought the drum and then uh, there were jingle dancers. And I thought, wow, this is really wonderful. And there were a lot of people surrounded. But nobody else thought it, it was important. What they, they made it a sacred place. They talked about it. And, and and no, you know, you saw it like, like, as in passing, how important it was, how important that Native people came to that place, how important that they danced, how important it was for them to sing. You know, this is 
who we are. And and you didn't see it on TV. Where were the, these these cameras and everything talking the about? The video wasn't there. You know? and, and, and so, uh, you know, I, when I'm thinking, when I think about it, I, I keep on thinking that you have to recognize us for who we are and how we approach because it's different. It really is different. And, and then I think of the pipeline and I think of, of, I, I think of all these places where, where Native people have been pushed down and, and, and uh, uh, murdered and beaten up. And, so, and, and I see all these people on the street saying Black Lives Matter. So where were they? Where were they when we were getting killed, when we were hurting, when, you know, where, you know, these pipelines and how it's going to kill the, the, the land and the water and, na and, and reservations and reserves, you know? So some people came there, but it wasn't this national thing. So was it the coronavirus who kept everybody in for so long? Was it that that started this? Is it, is it something that we have to learn that we're not learning? And, uh, you know, like it, if Black Lives Matter goes to Washington, I want to be there. You know, I want to I wanna be there. And uh, it's hard, you know, I'm an old lady. But I, I think now it's it's so important for us all to talk to each other, and we haven't been doing that. We, you know, we uh, we're sort of. It, and it, when I said I I I'm tired of being an asterisk because that's what it feels feels like. I'm tired of being the also ran. You know, we have a lot to say, and we're important. We're important. We're important to the, the earth. We're important to the sky. We're important to how we talk to each other. And, and so that's where I am. I, I, I feel that uh, now you have to talk about us. You have to really talk about us. When you talk about Black Lives Matter, you really have to talk about us. You know, certainly In the U.S. The brown people's lives matter, and certainly the red people's lives matter. That you know, we we have to really start talking to us, and that we're not unusual, we're not cute, we're not um, only spiritual, but you know, we're into the nitty gritty here. And all this is happening, and at the same time, you know, women are being murdered, you know, women are disappeared. There's heavy trafficking, and. Uh, you know, that is what's happening to us. It isn't like uh, nothing is happening to us. No? I'm through. <laughs> uh, there's one other thing uh, uh, I was told, and maybe it's uh, selfish or something. We do have to also take time out and take care of ourselves, our people, because at this, we have to be careful about being used. And, uh, uh, and, and, and I'm becoming uh, aware of that in terms of how to perform uh, uh, this experience because it is a, a, a double whammy experience of the protests and the virus. And it's, a, and it's a time to do something about it across the world and in, in the States and uh, We've, we have a lot of problems, a lot of problems to, to fight and battle. And I'm and not going to mention it all, but it's the uh, listening that's important too. And uh, <laughs> I remember one time uh, there was an essay written about me in the paper, and and uh, you know it was one of those things that people do about you know, a director of a, a native group and so on. And, uh, and I remember the young woman called me up and she said, well, do you have any last words that you want to say before I finish this, uh, you know, this article? And I said, yes, 
what is what's important is to listen, 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 listen. And she said to me, no, I mean, really, <laughs> what, <laughs> no, really, what, what's important? <laughs> you know, and I thought I said a very heavy thing. And I said, again, I said, no, really you have to listen, listen, listen. And, and so when I realized that she didn't get what I was saying, you know, that I started to talk about it in, in the uh, classrooms with, with, the, with the native kids and, and how important it is to listen. And, and uh, you know, it's just sitting outside uh, in my backyard uh, to listen to the birds, you know, uh, it's really important. Listen to the birds and listen, listening to the swaying of the trees and, it, and that centers me. You know, I put my hand on my big tree and, and I pray to my big tree. And, and I think, and listening to the tree, and listening to the tree. And I think uh, those things are considered airy-fairy, I don't know, but they're not considered important. And what's important is to really start at your own root. You have to start at your own route to, to, to make everybody understand, not only Native people, but everybody understand. And you have to listen. You really, you really have to listen. As according, according to what you're listening to also, what does a young white uh, a child hear? Uh, what's different in, in what uh, a young black baby or Indian baby, what, what they hear, and, and, and what does a city person like? I have a, I'm lucky enough to have two trees in front of my window, so when it's quiet, I can hear the birds. But ordinarily, you just hear sirens and, and cars, and uh, you, you can't hear. You have to stay in a place where you are, or, or, or be at a moment where you can listen. and listen and smell and feel the tree. Um, I don't know, we, we, we all have to get together and really talk about what, and maybe, maybe listening to the young people. The, the young people do have a different outlook nowadays, but we, we've got to all talk to each other in order to survive because um, I feel the ruling class, which is the white class still, uh, they don't, it's, they're not aware, if they're not aware, they, they can't listen. Have to become aware from the day they're born. So Frank? Yeah. What was the story of your parents? You say you and your parents. How did they experience New York, and what are, what were their stories? Me. They yeah. they were both quite different. My father, you know, my mother, Rabbi Lennox, but she was born in the city. My father was born on islands, the Kuna, uh, San Blas Islands. He had a absolutely different life than my mother, born in the city in New York. Uh, um, my mother, my father was uh, definitely indigenous in every sense and form, because he, and he died feeling that way, or fighting it, or trying to uh, see the white man's world and, and um, destruction of his soul because of it. And my mother, her mother, the Rappahannocks were Christians. So they believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and missionaries. So they, they had a conflict. Uh, I was lucky enough as a young age to see the difference. I don't know how it became uh, that I could see the difference the way my father thought and the way my mother thought. And I knew there was a conflict. And uh, so I, I, I was aware of certain things and I would fight my grandmother 
uh, I would uh, listen to my father and his friends who came and sang uh, and prayed and talked. Uh, I was in both worlds. Besides going to school in Brooklyn, I was born in the house where Muriel lives now and going to school in that neighborhood, which was absolutely Italian at that time. And uh, being aware of the white world that didn't like me. And uh, all those things I stored away or I kept uh, thinking about, and I still think about it, you know. Uh, I got to a point when, when I was younger wondering, what this person's thinking? How are they thinking? A native person, a black person, a white person. They're so different. They don't understand each other. And here I am in the middle, you know, trying to, to understand it, uh, 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 living a, a young youth's life, falling in love, uh, uh, getting married, uh, trying to, 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 to go to school and study. Because I had a great voice when I was young, I must say. And um, the schools wouldn't take me because they said I didn't have an academic background. So I had to find another way to, to, to get voice lessons. And I had to find different people who would help me. And uh, it was hard work, it's hard work, it's still hard work. Because after a while you don't know who you're going to trust. And you're lucky if you find someone you can really trust. And, and it's still going on, it's still, still, still working with people. <sighs> I think all of us feel that, you know, whether you're black or um, people of color, I think yes. we all feel that, that, you know, you can't trust anymore. And, uh, and that's hard. But, you know, growing up, I, I think of uh, very, very uh, centering, ways that uh, ways things happened to me. I, I was the youngest and so I was sheltered in many ways by my sisters. And, uh, but I remember all my uncles and I remember on Sunday them coming into the house and going into the front room and they would um, talk to each other in Kuna and they would sing and they would use the pipes. And I would hear all of this very young, all the way up and, until, you know, I was a grown woman. And it was and very important to them to do that. And so, you know, I have that feeling. And then I have the feeling of uh, a grandmother who came up from the South, who came from a, a reservation there and, and trying to get out of that a hard time there on that reservation. And when you think about it, my grandmother was a midwife and her mother was a midwife. And they would go by horseback to deliver babies all over this reservation. And so when they came to Brooklyn, and it's hard for people to understand that, but they came to Brooklyn, they had a hard time on the street because they were not white and the people that were living there at that time were Irish and Italian. And they put out um, a, a petition not to have uh, our family on this, on this block. But the landlord was a man of quite a, with integrity and he gave the house to the family to live in. You know, and I think, again, I think of those type of people that said, this is not right. I came from Ireland and it was really hard here. This is not right that we have to stop these people. So there was one man in all of this who was talking like that. So, you know, that is important. I, I think of that and I think of all the native kids that I grew up with because this, this neighborhood at that time uh, when I was growing up and, and uh, uh, all the way to Atlantic Avenue, where uh, it became a native uh, neighborhood. And that's what I grew up in. 
I had a hard time with a lot of the uh, kids on the block. And again, it, it was important to, to leave that. You know, I was a tough little kid on, you know, on the street and I was tough. I would be, I would go, go into a battle just as fast. Uh, but what saved me was my friends, all these native kids, you know, we would go back into the house. We learned songs, we learned dances. And that's what was important to us. And uh, we went, when, here's another story. I, uh, growing up and, and going to a grammar school, you know, um, the social studies teacher said that there are no longer uh, native people as he called them Indians, and um, they lost their culture. They don't have a culture and they're not around anymore. And I was like shocked. I was like uh, 10 or 11 years old. And I was absolutely shocked that, that this teacher could say such a thing. And I got up and uh, confronted him. And of course I got in big trouble. But then I learned that there were other native kids that were from the same group that I, you know, I used to play and, you know, fool around in, um, was getting in trouble the same way. They got in trouble because they said that the you know, native people were no longer living and they lost their culture and there's nothing, you know, there's nothing left of it. And they confronted them and they got in trouble. So out of that came a group called the Legals. And we went into schools and we talked about our culture. Now that's a long time ago. We were from 11 to maybe 15 and we did that. That's a long time ago. You know, that was in the I don't know, uh, late forties that we did this. And, and so I, I, still, I still have that feeling. I still have that feeling of you have to go, you have to do it. You know, you have to find a way of doing it. There has to be a way of doing it. And, and that's, so, I mean, that's what, how I, I approached Spider Woman Theater was that I had to do it. These things were really important and I had to say them. And I didn't know what the audience was going to be, who it was going to be, but I had to say them and I was going to gather women together to talk about that. And that was, at that time, being beat up and raping. And, you know. uh, is it also, and it's yeah. still going on. It's still going on that, you know, women are disappearing. Women are yeah. being yeah. murdered. It's still going on. Yeah. In now. Canada, many women, indigenous women in Canada. That's right. And here, not only here too, in yeah. Canada, here, here, here. The, the whole USA, you know, it, 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 that is happening here in both places. So imagine what's happening in Mexico. Imagine, you know, if you're starting to think of people of color and you're starting to think of, of, first, of first Nations people, what, you know, the, the, what's uh, happening? Yeah, the magic of, of uh, uh, there was still a, a bit of magic in the whole thing about being Native and because uh, Indigenous, uh, different tribe because years ago, well, even before Mira was, was born, we used to have a, a club of Native people uh, and uh, we, we, uh, we met at our home and uh, we danced, we sang for the people and, it, and everybody was interested in the neighborhood, the, the churches, everybody was interested in that. So that little speck uh, 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 of, of um, tradition in an Italian neighborhood, I think, did save us. Because I remember some psychiatrists wanted a spider woman uh, to, to perform and talk to them. And later on, after we were having dinner, and I said, well, how come you picked us? What, 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 what? You know, what is that? And, the, and one of the doctors said to me, because you identified and your tradition helped you and you survived. And those little words, survival, uh, magic maybe, or interest, 
uh, uh, gives me confidence that I'm worth something. I, you know, people make fun of me, but it's good, and uh, and that's what my most magnificent <laughs> stories come out of that 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 background of 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 doing something. Like I I, I was reminded just now of a, a teacher who was very racist. She was mad at me because I lost lost my space in the reading, and she came up to me and she knocked me off the seat onto the floor, and it was awful. And I went home. We used to go home for lunch and all that. And I told my mother, and my father was home that time too. So in the afternoon, without telling me, without telling the teachers, or and my mother and father knocked on the door of that classroom. And they both came in, and my father was a very beautiful Indian. My mother was a beautiful woman, and they walked up to the teacher and they gave her help. And I felt so proud. I felt so proud. There's a way to fight it. There's a way to do something about it. And my mother and father were wonderful. They told that teacher that. That, that they don't touch me or hit me or push me on seats. What right did she have to touch a, uh, me? And it was, I was so proud. So the little bit of, of, of strength grew that, that to, to show up and be proud of what you are and do something about it. It's very important, you know, even if it is small. Because I, from then on, I could go back to school and hold my head up. You know, it, 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 just being proud that of, of, of the difference and being proud of the song or the story and, and, and exploring it and telling people, you know, you might be Italian and you have your Italian song, I have my song, you know, and, and uh, it, it gave me strength in, in performing. That just fighting back, a little bit of a fight, but fighting back. And I think uh, that is probably still there, and, although I do, did drown a lot of the uh, experiences. But uh, there are other people who have experiences. And, um, I think and, and I look at it in terms of, of how you asked yourself the question. And you're always asking yourself the question, why did this happen? How did this happen? And, and, uh, and really looking at it. I mean, I, I realized as Gloria was talking that one of the things I remember saying uh, when we were working is what is the question? And that was so important to me talking about what is the question and how how do you look at it with oh, the question how do you come to it do you you know do you come to it sideways you come up tunnel it up from the ground or you hit it from the sky but how do you um approach it and get all these sides working and getting all the sides because there can't be only one answer and uh and and that's how i approach uh directing and that's how I approach um, what, when I'm, all of us are talking. That's why it's so important to talk and listen to each other, is that that's how we get to where we're going in answers. Uh, and uh, yeah, and that to me is really, really important, that question. You know, what is the question? You know, that really is important to me. Anything else you want to answer? <laughs> yeah, no. This is all. This is so um, so important and significant. You know what you say, and I'm uh, trying to take it in. And I wonder, you know, what it means to you when you hear, um, for good reason, that said the original sin was slavery, and then you say, you know, there was something before slavery. Yeah. And um, so, how do you? How do you, um, yeah, how, how does it make you feel? How does it make you all feel? Many years ago, uh, this was during the height of the American Indian movement in New York City, 
there were a couple of men um, that were standing outside the Museum of Natural History. And uh, it's, it's really a long, long time ago. And they decided to do something about Teddy Roosevelt and uh, the, the, poor down, yeah, the poor downtrodden native people and all of this. And when you look at it, you really, really hate it. You really hate that statue. And so they threw uh, paint on it and they got arrested. And, uh, but all of us were like, it was wonderful, you know? And then uh, they scrubbed it up and did all this without any thinking of what Teddy Roosevelt meant to us and, and the, the idea of having these poor downtrodden Indians that he, he made them slaves and wasn't he a hero. So yesterday, in, you know, when it came on that they're, going, they're talking about taking, <laughs> taking away the statue outside the Museum of Natural History, you know, I saw war whooping. <laughs> yeah, that's what well, I you know, didn't hear it was that. like so <laughs> wonderful, you know, that it only took, uh, let's see, how many years is that? Fifty years. <laughs> it only took about fifty years for for people to realize it, and and it you know uh, uh, you know we're talking about Confederate flags. We're talking about you know Robert E. Lee and, and the conquistadors and so forth. Christopher and, Columbus. You know, and so and then <laughs> you hear Cuomo say, "Well, we can't take down uh, uh, Columbus Circle because there are so many." people, and this is a nice man, this is a nice governor, uh, because uh, they all identify with Christopher Columbus, you know, and you say, damn, you know. <laughs> a guy, Columbus, who never, yes. who never set foot on America, on North That's America, right. he was just on the That's island, right. who was the first slave trader, he was the very first to take slaves, you know, yeah. back, and yeah. uh, yeah. it's terrible it's colonial... Oh, yeah, to discover all those people, and if they don't want to uh, become Italian, whatever, you kill them. And he did. That's right. <laughs> That's yeah, true. That, so, do you that, think that, you will see the statue go down, or the Roosevelt? I or? hope so. You know, I mean, I was like, will you make a special <laughs> ceremony? Will you do a special <laughs> ceremony? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. We would need a lot of uh, us. I don't maybe, know. Maybe they should have a ceremony, not just tear it down and destroy it, but uh, uh, just take it down. Yeah, Put it somewhere else and in context, mouth, you know. Saying ceremony at a time yeah. like this, um, it, you know, I guess I can't have it both ways, you know, mm. that, that, that it should be taken down. And, and at yeah. the same time, you know, ceremony makes us special in a different way. And is that good or bad? I mean, that's the questions I have, is that, you know, so, uh, yeah, yeah, I, mm. I, I don't know. You know, I think there should be a park, you know, with all those statues of that southern, whatever, the Confederate yes. generals. And they could be, <laughs> and maybe they should face statues of other people, of indigenous people. Of color, and they should have a dialogue. Because, yes, they are pieces of art. They shouldn't be destroyed. But they, the context um, it was interesting, has to change. Those guys, and Wilson, you know, this great African-American artist, that's what he does. He takes things. Yeah. He found shackles, you know, of uh, baby slaves, slaves who are little children. And he put it nice next to 17th century silverware from Boston. You know, he said, this oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was produced in the same time. Think about it. Yes, yes. You know? Yeah. And he had, I think he had a pole, a whipping pole. And then he had beautiful furniture done, you know, in Philadelphia and in, in anywhere. And they said that he arranged the furniture that they would look at this pole. And he said, think about it. This was done at the yeah. same moment, you know? not destroying, but it should be taken away there and it should be replaced with something. It should be a place for those, those statues because you learn something from it. It was interesting. There, there was a, a mother of, a, of someone I knew who, um, you know, she would see all these little uh, black men, you know, the jockeys, uh, the people that, the, the slaves that held uh, the, uh, what are they called? They're, they're, they're just outside of houses, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, people that uh, you put your bike uh, on it, or mm -hmm. you you sit, you know, you tie well, up. They, your have, they have fear, and they have the little uh, uh, fairies and uh, black. And men. then they have these little black 
uh, jockeys, right? Yeah. Mm. And so she would go out and, uh, <laughs> this was her mother, and she would go out and paint them white. She would paint their faces and their hands white. <laughs> and I thought, Good. that's really wonderful. I love that idea. You know, you go out and paint them white. Mm. Yeah. No, I like very much what you both said. It's time to listen. Um, it's also a time to talk to each other. Yeah. And also it's a time for everybody, especially us also, yes, the white people, to realize it's not your burden to explain. It's not yeah. up for you to do the emotional work. It's not up for you to, you know, to say we should do that. And as uh, uh, Gloria said, you have to also take care of yourself. What a terrible time and everything that comes up right now. You, you, were, you felt, you got physically sick in this COVID time, Gloria, if I understand. You had a medical uh, condition that developed right now in, other people say, oh, it's a great time. I spent with my family. I can do reading. You know, I'm enjoying it so much and I can watch films. For you both, it's something very different, that experience. Yes. Uh, even yeah. right now, as we talk about my heart, going bum, 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 you know. It, mm -hmm. And people out. died, yeah, in your family, because as we, as far as we know, indigenous people, yeah, a much, much higher rate, you know, for whatever reasons, you know. Uh, and there well, are many, you see many it, you see it right there. You know, you see your whole family going right there in front of you. You know, that's what got me, was that, you know, my son-in-law passed away. My daughter was sick at home. You know, my grandchild was taking care of my, my daughter. And uh, it was like right in front of me, you know, and you couldn't do anything. It was like touching air or something. You couldn't, you couldn't, you know, you couldn't get to it. You couldn't hug them. You couldn't support them. It was, I think, one of the hardest times in my life. It was very, very hard. And, and, uh, and I think probably, you know, in a year, because you think of it every day, in a year maybe, there'll be some answers somewhere in, for us, or for me, at least, for me, how to approach things. And, you know, the, and, and, and theater now is, is uh, like, how do we approach theater? How do we approach these, all these questions we're asking? And, and how, um, like, I want a theater space, a native theater space. I want a theater space because it's, everyone else in New York City has a theater space, you know? You don't, uh, and, not even and, a 90 seat theater you could get, right? Uh, yeah, nothing, we have nothing. And I, uh, and I really, really want it. And it seems it almost started to appear that maybe this could be possible because I started to talk to people. And, and then the, the virus arose and everything. I was going to have a convene and, and bring in the old uh, native uh, theater people that had been working here for over 50 years and uh, all of us talking together. And, and, and bring in uh, uh, some of the chiefs and some of the clan mothers and have us all talk together and come and, and a, a way of finding a way uh, to find a theater space and, and how do we keep the theater space up and all of that. I wanted to talk about that. And of course, the virus came and shut down everything and this was pushed, it was supposed to be in May and, and then uh, one of the young men that was working with me was my son-in-law who passed away. And so everything stopped. Everything stopped for me. Uh, it, was, it, it was frozen in space for me. It was really, I, I, taking an, an, uh, an inhaling a breath and holding it, that's what it felt like to me. Nothing was happening. So I realized that's what I was doing. So I, I had to really start thinking and talking uh, and, and see if we can do this, if we can uh, find a space. Now, what do we do? We do with a space. If you can't touch and you can't be more than 10 people and, 
and people are maybe still getting sick. What do you do? What do you do as uh, uh, different uh, theater groups together? You only talk like we're talking now, but then what do you do with the piece that you produce? How do you work that? So I, uh, I bought a, 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 a theremin, you know, one of those. Mm -hmm. those uh, mm -hmm. You can and, move the uh, hand and the melody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. I bought one of those and I sent it to one of the people from the ensemble and asked her to start just um, a song, compose a song, a native song with, and use the, the, the theremin. And, and then, I, then we started to think, uh, my partner and I, I started to think about how do we do it? We could have a music uh, forum on, on TV like this, you know, and how do, how do we do it that we get all the ensemble in there and, and who do we bring in? And, and, and of course, I, I, I'm such a novice. I, I know nothing about this you know, putting it together like this. But that's what I'm thinking. Now, you know, there's a huge hurdle to come over and some people are not going to make it and some people will not want to make it and some people will go off on their own. But my feeling is that we have to really jump the hurdle. We have to jump the hurdle and find out what's on the other side and, uh, and, uh, and see all the things that Gloria was talking about, be aware of that, be aware of that, but still go on, still, you know, still jump the hurdle and get to the other side and start working again. Because that's, a, that, I mean, when I think about it, that's how I started to work when I realized how many women were being beaten. This is, uh, you know, over 40 years ago when I realized how many women were being beaten and, and, uh, I decided to, to uh, start Spider Woman, but it, more than that was to tell the stories. And, you know, as Gloria was talking, I, I was thinking, you know, now we really have to tell these stories now. These are the stories that have to be told. These are the stories, you, you know, the, the, the things like being invited to something, you're on a panel, and then people tell you what to do. And that, to me, is not being an ally. You know, they talk to all the things about being allies and I, or cohorts or all of this stuff that I could not accept because they're telling you what to do and how to think. And my feeling is you have to move over because we're here too. And well, that's we why, that, that's yeah, why we... I want to approach the hurdle, you know? I want to approach the hurdle of we're here too and, and that's, I think, black, wait a minute, Gloria. Black Lives Matter is true, but we're here too. And that's, that's really important. We're here too. We support you. You have to support us. You know, it's, it's just not only one, one color here. There's all of us, we're all these colors. You know, we're talking about, you know, uh, Latino and, and, and Asian and all of these, we're all, you know, and, and of course we're going to fight, but that is what we're supposed to do, I think, is fight, you know? That's how we listen to each other, and it doesn't mean we're going to get not get hurt, and I think all of that is part of how we're, how we're thinking is that we're afraid to get hurt, we're afraid to die, we're afraid to get sick, we're afraid of a lot of things. And that I think is part of the solution is how, how do we make it that we're not afraid? Not afraid when we jump the hurdle and we don't know what's on the other side. That's what's important. Even though we are sick and even though, because I think uh, all the stories we've always tried to tell, like what I've been told is that, oh, I thought you were going to sing a nice little song and do a nice little dance. I didn't know you're going to make us cry, and and people uh, don't want to hear those stories. But I think they're the stories that make us what we are, and uh, and and if we're sick, it's because we didn't tell those stories, and 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 these stories are not only told by Native Indigenous people; they're told by 
all people of color. And, and uh, we have to listen to each other, maybe not even to, uh, to let the white people stand back, uh, do another shield, and, and uh, we have to go ahead anyway. Do you feel was the time now of Corona in thinking again existentially as you both, it's so hard. I mean, of all the interviews we have done, this is one of the hardest experiences, you know, you, you tell us about. It. Um, do you think your theater will be different? Will you do something different than before? Will you do the, do you feel it's gonna change the way how you approach theater and performance? Will there be something different? It should. I think it should change. It has to be different. I, I think, um, yeah, I think it's going to be different. I really do think it's going to be different. How it's going to be different, I have no idea. And, I, and that is what's exciting. You know, that I have no idea uh, what's going, it means me just diving in to direct something and not having, um, well, you know, the white theater people are telling me what to do. I think that that is a big, thing that that we we have to really I've, I've had too much experience now in, um, in not being a good Indian not being a good native that I, I uh, you know and you and you fight that with people that really you know they want to they want to become famous they want to make money and listen I can't put that down I think that that's that's the way they're going and I don't go that way and I um, as long as they don't put me down I'm not interested in putting them down you know I really feel that way uh, but I think I think it's going to take a lot of talking I think because I, I, I was thinking the other day I started to write other thing that happened to me was that I couldn't write after uh, my son-in-law Kevin passed, it was like um, it was like this black thing came into my brain and just shut it down. And um, I would have dreams. I would dream about about him. And uh, what did you dream? Do you, do you... I don't know. All mm -hmm. I know, he was there. He was there. Mm -hmm. He was there. And um, that and that was uh, very hard. You know, and uh, people would ask me that because I had a dream of Kevin. And, uh, and and I don't know. I don't know what I dreamt of. I just know that he was there. And so I, in a way, talking about it, because I don't talk about it much, um, in a way, I think this kind of talking and whatever he had to say, because I always felt that Kevin um, had a lot uh were a lot of work in in his time he did a lot of work in his time and uh that i i have to if it's just his presence then i have to feel that presence and start to understand what that presence means you know in my mind and when i'm sleeping so i you know uh that's that, that's that that's how i'm thinking about it and out of that all of that i think uh, something will rise, something will be. And I have the slightest idea. I'm excited about it now because at least this black curtain has risen. You know, I'm not, mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm starting to write again and that wasn't happening. And so I'm, I'm uh, excited about that. All I could do was crossword puzzles mm -hmm. and, and, <laughs> and, you know, the, you know, it was like going into a black hole or something. Now I, you know, I'm I'm really thinking, and and I can sit down and I can dash off things and and mm. and, and questions and and uh, and 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 yeah, yeah. It, it, it's different. It's a little by little, the curtain is coming up. You know, the mm. curtain is coming up. Wow. <laughs> yeah. mm. No, but you know yeah. what I mean. The yeah, curtain. absolutely. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, we, we, this talk should go on for, for much, much longer. We are coming towards a bit towards the end. So my question is also for you with your, you said earlier, we see things different, you know, um, the time of Corona, what do you suggest young artists of every color, everyone, what should they be thinking about? And what should our listeners, what's important and what's meaningful? How should we use this time? Well, that has to come from the individual. Each person had an experience, I'm sure, from the corona and, and the protest uh, to, to, to dig up, uh, uh, to discover, to, to work on. Uh, there's so many things that, you know, uh, uh, I hid or I protected myself. Or maybe I don't protect myself as much anymore. What have I got to lose? And uh, and just you know tell the truth from where it comes, and a lot of times uh, you experience it, you see it, you feel it, and it's going on, and you you have to uh, let it go. You have to let it. You have to feel it, and you have to put it out there. Uh, uh, the protection is. Uh, uh, you, you gotta lick your wounds and go on, and and that's what uh, or the people I'm talking to feel. That way. Either that or uh, some silly story comes out. Uh, what, but there's an there's an answer and there's a reason for that too. From where people are, from where they are, I have a lot of faith in the young people thinking different. Because other, all the people are protecting their ancestors, their feelings, their, their mistakes. So you got to do a lot of thinking, a lot of thinking. Well, you know, we talked about elders, and we're always talking about elders, and, and how uh, you take care of the elders and so forth. But I, I think that uh, young people, are talking to the elders and uh, and more that the young people talk to the elders than the elders talking to the young people. Uh, that's one thing I, I, I think of uh, that how important it is to share, share all these things. And, and, um, and then the other thing is that we are storytellers. We do big storytelling. And uh, and what I do is story weaving, where I you know I use many stories to bring them together to find the to find the the kernel of four stories, and is there a kernel in those four stories? So I I really want to look at it again, and. Um, the group I have now, it's, it's intergenerational. There's Gloria and myself, and then there are many people, uh, and then there are the, real, the young ones, you know, 24-year-olds and 25-year-olds that are in there. And to, uh, to really um, be aware that there are older people and as well as the older people being aware that there are young people. And, and, and how do you listen to the story? So if you're older and you're hearing a story, how do you listen to the story? In the same way with the young people, how do you listen? And, uh, and that's, I, you know, it's, it's the same thing I was saying before. I mean, that's how I want to um, approach the uh, scenario now of how do I go back to working in Spider-Woman how do I go back to do the, to do that? And uh, yeah, yeah. And I, 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 it, it's really important, as Gloria says. It's important to um, to look at the young ones, to look at the young ones, and 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 listen to what they're saying, and also uh, their perception of what's going on. Because a lot of times they they perceive what's the truth that's going on. And the, because they're young, they say, oh, 
that doesn't matter. As young, but a lot of those feelings are the beginning. Mm-hmm. Why did my grandmother say that? Why did my uncle say that? Where did that come from? Is that true? Question. Listen, young people yeah. do that. Yeah, because I was thinking that uh, I would like to write some um, some myths some legends or something that uh, includes the coronavirus. Um, Some kind of a thing that was a foretelling. And uh, I have no idea what I'm saying, but Mm -hmm. I'm excited at the idea of, that's what happened as I sat down and started to to write like that. And, um, but you know that there are, in, in the creation stories, there are so many, from one you know group of people that a creation story goes on and on and on and on and you know all these native people have creation stories that go on and on and on and on and i was thinking that's the way we should write now about what's happening in the experience is that these are creation stories we don't know where they're going and 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 uh we're going to find out what it means with the coronavirus, you know, what, what does, it, is it a foretelling or is it really something that's coming in to destroy all of us? And, you know, people say it's a conspiracy and blah, yada, yada, yada. And, oh. and I, I, I say, you know, how can you say, you know, people are dead. They're dead. I don't care if it's a conspiracy or not. They're dead, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and uh, they're dying. They're still yeah, dying. Yeah. And, so, but that comes in too, you know, of uh, how suspicious people are and uh, all of us, how suspicious we are. And, uh, all, you know, that, that some kind of a, a, a myth like that, some kind of, of a story that goes on and on and on and on. That's what I'm thinking in my head. Mm. How do you, how do you, how do you take a story and, make it go on and on and and from one thing another thing sprouts and from that sprout there's another sprout and uh and see see where it goes yeah yeah that's a quite an interesting and significant uh, uh, advice to say this is a creational story where we do not know where it ends what's coming what's in front of us and there for thousands of years has been these stories but we are now in a new one and we don't know, yeah. we are trying to make sense. And artists anticipate the future, they feel the presence, they're on the right side of history. So, and I like what you said, we should be listening. You said the older people should listen to the young people. We, the earth we are going to leave to them is important. So they, we have to listen to them, we have to think about them, we have to take care of everybody, as you said, of all people of color. And um, so this is, was really um, significant. And also you, what Gloria said, you know, not telling stories makes you sick. Maybe also not hearing all the stories makes you sick. The society is sick because we don't know all the stories because some people don't want them or think they're not as important, but actually, you know, what, mankind, we are much different. We are not individuals, but maybe we are connected and we, we don't take care of all of us. Um, and uh, we all suffer in, um, in some way. So um, this is really, I think this was a very significant contribution of both of you to share with us very, that painful moment, what you go through that also, you know, connects to so many painful things, the file cabinet, what you, Gloria said in life, the microaggressions every day, every week, every year, every decade, and after so many decades, what does it to all of us? And it's time for healing. And it has to come from the world also towards you and an acknowledgement um, of what and happened. I think that's yeah. that's what has happened is that the what the virus. I'm not saying it's good. I'm not saying the virus yeah. is good, but the virus has pushed, really pushed a lot of people where they didn't want to be. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. I'm certainly yeah. don't want to be in a house for Obama, but I go to the garden and I'm connecting with, the, I'm connecting with the soil and the mud, and the birds, and that I would not would. Uh, mm-hmm. I would not have done that. Good. And this is also serious advice for everybody. Connect to the soil, to the earth, to the garden, to the trees, and listen to the yeah. birds. It's very, very, very profound 
serious advice uh, throughout centuries, poets, artists, Zen masters, they all have taught us that. And yeah. um, so what uh, Muriel is saying and Gloria, this is of, can change our life, can save our lives. So really, everybody take it serious. We are coming now to do the end. Really, thank you. I hope also, I think Ralph Pena from the Mayi Theater said, I'm going to change my small space into some kind of a TV studio. I don't know what to do, but it's also going to be open. Maybe, you know, there's a way for you guys. He says, I'm going to find a way. We had Ashley Kelly here and the Met Forest team. They figured out something on Zoom. So you were stage managing. Everybody's in their own homes. They figured out some kind of a software. Maybe if all talk to each other and Ralph yeah. and Ashley and you, and you can do your spider woman uh, uh, production from there and, uh, and, and we learn something. You maybe reach many, many, many audiences they didn't know before. Tomorrow we have with us Daniele Franciski from the Caribbean, from Martinique. She will tell how does it feel when you're in the Caribbean, on the islands and so uh, far away and so close in a way to also to the dangers of the virus and uh, the great Eugenio Barbar in Denmark the Odin Theater, a legend, a uh, significant thinker yeah, yeah. also of theater. Um, or, you know, graciously um, said, you know, I'm going to take my time and talk to you. And we will listen to him, what he has to say uh, about what it's, he feels and what he thinks is of significant. Um, we will have Paul Price, an American actor, producer, the director, like just a working, working American actor. How does he, how does he experience this time? Um, of Corona and Liva Yatsi from Syria, who fled Syria, lives now in Berlin. Uh, she writes theater. She's a poet, poetry, also some to survive some uh, uh, some uh, TV series, some uh, how do you call them, um, soap operas in Syria. But uh, so, how does it feel for her? She just had a baby, and um, and she is now in exile. And um, so, what does that time do to her? So, uh, really, to our audience, thank you, thank you for listening. It is important for Gloria and Muriel, that to know that you are listening. Anybody is listening who knows the commissioner for the arts, anybody say, get these guys a theater. It's important. New York City should have at least one space of a 90-seat theater where it's a place for Native American artists and indigenous artists who could also be a forum for artists from around the world to come, not just for them and from all colors, but it is of significance as a symbolic way, as a meaningful, real representation of an imagination and what we do here in America, it has something to do with the landscape, the country, the earth, and the closest to them are, um, of course, the First Nations. They have been here for such a long time and they yeah. know more about this land than we do. And we have to respect that and we have to understand it and take it serious. So thanks for HowlRound for, for really for having us, uh, VJ and Sia and the Siegel team, Andy and Sun Young. And again, to you listeners, uh, please, uh, Come back, listen to us. It is of meaning to our artists who are here. And perhaps also there's something in there that will be of meaningful to you and that art can contribute to the richness of our lives. And we rethink who we are because we have to change if we want the world to change. And it has to be an authentic change. And artists are closer to that. And both of you, again, I'm so, so sorry to hear about all the sufferings and growing up in New York City. We all don't really think how hard that is and what it means in a daily life. So um, um, thank you um, for sharing and, uh, and yeah. I wish and I, just send out, I just want to send out a thank you and love to all of our family and, yeah. and all of us uh, that are there that are still yeah. living and even the non-living. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you thank for you. being with um, us. We are so sorry to hear of the passing of your son-in-law yeah. and the uh, members of your company and yeah. all the friends. It's a, it's a very sad, sad, sad time. So thank you. And uh, to the audience, stay safe, wear masks, uh, wash your hands. It is important. And um, we, nothing lasts forever. Not the good things, but also not the bad things. So we will be coming out of this, but we have to be careful. We have to protect ourselves. But we also need the time to think to change what needs to be changed. So thank you, Gloria and thank Maria. You. And Gloria, so great you got on the iPad for your, your first Zoom talk. This is fantastic. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Uh, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.